Hello and welcome to Everlasting Summer. I am RMP792 and... Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this game now. Uh, why am I doing this one? I, I actually got a request to do it. This happens on occasion. I do occasionally get uh, the odd request. Or... Request's the wrong word. Probably recommendation might be a better word. I said at some point I really ought to consider getting a Patreon or something just so I can actually get... You know, People can pay me to do specific uh, things rather than just me taking requests. But I know almost nothing about this game going in. Um, yeah, I actually do know completely nothing about this game. It's made by a company called Soviet Games, and I get the impression it might be a wee bit communist. So if you are offended by communism, you might find this either amusing or you might you know, choose to leave. I honestly don't know. So. Regardless, uh, usual opening spiel, uh, all of these videos are recorded a week in advance, um, so the Let's Play series will come out over the course of Monday to Friday. Uh, depending on how long it is, I might have to split it over an additional second week. That only happens if the game is longer than 25 half-hour parts, which doesn't happen that often. And particularly since this is a free game, I'd be incredibly surprised if that happens here. So, uh, anything else? Ah, yes. The other thing I will usually say at the beginning is that if you wish to comment on any particular part of the video, please do. I do read every comment. Uh, it's highly probable that I will make some rhetorical statements, you know, might ask questions, that kind of thing. And if you wish to reply to them, please do. But be advised that because my brain is a rambling mess, uh, the odds of me actually remembering anything I've said from one minute to the next are pretty low. So if you wouldn't mind tagging the point in the video where I said whatever you're replying to, that would make my life so much easier, because I'll actually be able to tell what on earth you're replying to. So, with uh, the usual introductory spiel out of the way, let us get on with this. So, new game. I'm gonna... Should I do the entire game trying to use comedy Russian accents? I'm not sure if I could do a comedy Russian accent, to be honest. <clears throat> Dear Pioneer, you're on the verge of wondrous discoveries. The doors of the most wonderful place in the world, our favorite Camp Sauvignon, have opened before you. You'll remember this session for the rest of your life. Welcome. That was kind of all over the damn place, wasn't it? But anyway. I was having that dream once again. That dream. The same every night. No, I'm, I'm not going to keep up the Russian accent. I can't. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the same every night. But it's all forgotten in the morning as usual. <sighs> Maybe it's for the best. Only a glimpse of memory will remain of gates half opened as if inviting me somewhere. With two frozen stone pioneers standing close by. And also that, that strange girl who keeps asking me. Will you come with me? Come? But where? And why? And where am I, anyway? Of course, if it all happened in real life, I'd, have been cer I'd certainly have been scared, but... <laughs> what else would one expect to feel? But this is just a dream. And it's the same one I see every night. There must be... a reason. <laughs> you don't have to know where or why to realise something really is happening. Something desperately seeking my attention, since everything that surrounds me here is real. As real as the things in my own flat. I could open the gates, hear the hinges creak, brush the crumpling rust away with my hand, inhale the fresh, cool air and, and shiver from the cold. I could, but to do that, I would need to pick myself up, take a step, move my hand. But this is a dream. I understand that, but, but what of it? What does my understanding change. Because here, it's just like on the other side of cracked an old TV which struggles to fight against static noise and, and strives to show its audience everything without missing a single detail. But the picture's just getting blurry. I must be waking up soon. Maybe I should... Maybe I should ask her something. The girl... What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? 
I'd rather th or ask about the gates. Yes, the gates. She'd be so surprised. Or better, why the dot over an I was called a title, but the dot over a J was called a superscript dot. Nice letters. <laughs> As if they don't exist anymore. Still, what the letters and gates and stars have to do with this place? Because even if I'm having this dream every night, which I'll be forgotten soon anyway, I've got to look for answers here and now. And there, if you look carefully, you can see the melogenic clouds. As if it ended up in the southern hemisphere. In a dream, there are the small things that catch your attention. The unnatural colour of grass, impossible curves of straight lines, or your own distorted reflection. While the real danger, which could put an end to everything right here and now, seems trivial. It's natural, since here you cannot die. I know it for sure, I've, I've done it hundreds of times. But if you can't die, is there a point to living? I should ask the girl. She's a local, you, she should know. Yes, exactly. I, I should ask her about the owl, for example. What a strange bird it is. Though it doesn't matter. Will you come with me? And every time I have to answer. It's the only way, otherwise the dream will never end. I'll never wake up. Yeah, I'll go with her. Every time, it's so hard to decide on the answer. Where am I? What am I doing here? Who is she? Why does so much of my life depend on this answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It is just a dream, after all. <sighs> just a dream. Well, this game's already a bit trippy. <laughs> okay, we have a very blurry image of a keyboard and a monitor. With was that what I think it was? <laughs> that that looked like. Uh... Okay, go back into focus. Thank you. Yes, that appears to be somebody using a pink-haired girl. Okay, right, whatever. <clears throat> the computer screen stared at me as if it was alive. Sometimes it really did seem to me that it was conscious of itself. It had its own thoughts and wishes, ambitions that it had feelings and could love and could suffer. As if our relationship, the screen wasn't an instrument. It was me who was lifeless, a piece of plastic and textile. But there is some truth in that. Probably because the computer provides 90% of my communication with the outside world. Anonymous image boards, some chats from time to time. Rarely ICQ or Jabber, and forums even more rarely. People on the other end of the internet cable simply do not exist. All of them are simply creations of its sick imagination, an error in the source code or, or a kernel bug which started living a life of its own. Yes, this is all very existential and very weird. <laughs> it's a while since I've played anything quite this trippy. <laughs> if one looked at my existence from the outside, such thoughts would seem crazy. <laughs> and a psychologist would surely give me a bunch of sophisticated diagnoses and, well, maybe write me a referral to the loony bin. I don't think they call them that anymore. At least not in the official paperwork. <laughs> I'll say one thing for this game, it's got an awful lot of art. A small apartment, no signs of repair, no semblance of any order in it, and always the same view out of the window on the grey megalopolis, running somewhere day and night. <sighs> Such are the conditions of my life. Well, of course it didn't all start like this. I was born, went to school, finished it like all the others. I was accepted at a university where I spent a year and a half trailing behind and struggling, drifted through several jobs. 
Sometimes it was working out quite well, but sometimes I was even getting decent money for it. But it all felt like it wasn't mine, as if it was taken from another man's biography. I wasn't living life to its fullest. I was looping over and over in monotonous circles. Like in the movie Groundhog Day. It's just that I had no choice in how to spend my day, and every day repeated itself the same vicious spiral. A spiral of emptiness, misery, despair. For the last few years, I just sat in front of the screen all day. Sometimes there were menial jobs, and well, sometimes my parents helped me. All in all, I was able to provide, but no wonder really, my needs are quite minor. I hardly ever leave my home, and my communication with other people almost exclusively consists of online correspondence with the Anonymous, who have no real name, no gender, no age. So in brief, a quite typical life of a quite typical antisocial person at this time. Kind of Donnie Darko on a minor scale, you know, without doomsday related visions. Maybe some highly respected author will write a novel about me, and it'll become a contemporary classic of modern literature. Or maybe I'll write one myself. Nah. However, what's the point of fooling myself? I've tried many times, but I couldn't even come up with a simple short story. I've tried to learn many other things as well. Not gifted enough to draw. Programming, I got bored. Foreign languages, ugh, takes too much time. No, the only thing I ever loved doing was reading, but no, I would still never have called myself a scholar. Perhaps I was an ace at watching anime and a grandmaster of lame internet jokes. <laughs> if I could get paid for it, I'd probably be a happier person. Well, I'm a richer person too, but I doubt it would fill in the hole inside of me. Today was another typical day in a typical failure's typical life. And today's the day when I have to go to my university reunion. Frankly speaking, I... I really didn't want to. What's the point? The time I spent with them was so short. However, I was persuaded by a friend, my former university mate, and well, one of the few with whom I actually kept in touch other than through the internet. I said the art is very stylized, but I, I kind of like it actually. Now, is that meant to be us, I wonder? Probably. Beard. I can't pull off a beard, I know that. <sighs> a frosty evening. Bus stop. Waiting. I never liked winter. Though hot summer's not my season either. It's just that I see no reason to point out any particular time of year. It doesn't matter much what the weather outside is like when you just stay at home 24-7. <sighs> the bus today was running so late that I was about to curse it all and spend my last few hundred rubles for a taxi. And the idea of just returning home just didn't cross my mind for some reason. As usual, millions of thoughts through fl flew through my mind, but uh, there wasn't a single useful one to seize on. Such a thought that you could bring into existence, give shape, turn it into an idea, and put into practice. Maybe I could start my own business. Uh, but where would I get the money from? Or maybe I could go back to working in an office. No. No, 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 no. No way. Maybe I should try freelancing. What skills do I have, and who would want me after all? I suddenly remembered my childhood, or rather my teen years, the time when I was 15, 17 years old. Why exactly those years? Hmm, no idea. I guess it's because back then everything was just much more simple. It's easier to make decisions, so complicated now and so simple then. Waking up in the morning I knew exactly how my day was going to pass. Eagerly looking forward to the weekend, then I could get some rest, have time for the things I liked. Computer, football, going out with friends. And then, at the beginning of the week, I'd take up my studies again. Back then, there were no such worrying questions like why and who needs it and 
What will change if I do it, or what will not change? A simple lifestyle, so casual for any normal person, and so odd to myself today. Oh, that careless childhood age. That was also when I met my first love. Her appearance and personality have vanished from my memory. Only her name remains, like a brief line from a social network profile, along with the feelings that overwhelmed me when I was with her. Affection, tenderness, the desire to care for her, protect her. Sadly, it didn't last long, and today I can hardly imagine something like that happening. I'd probably like to meet a girl, but oh, I don't know how to start a conversation, what on earth to discuss, how to attract her. Well, I haven't met any suitable girls in a long time. It is depressing how much this sounds like my actual life. <clears throat> but where can I meet one anyway? The sound of an engine brought me back to reality, and the bus pulled over. There was something abnormal about it, I thought. Then again, it doesn't matter. 410, only the 410 runs on this route. That looks kind of ominous. Have we just got on the bus from hell? <laughs> Street lights pass me by, and it's as if they're cold light sparks inside of me, trying to ignite feelings long dead. Or maybe not ignite, just awaken them? Because those feelings, they've been living in me for a long time, slumbering, waking up again. <sighs> the driver's radio was playing some very familiar tune, but I wasn't listening to it. I was watching the cars passing by through the fogged up window. Because people are always rushing somewhere, chasing something they need, stuck in their own little worlds. Why would they care about mine? Oh, they probably have their own serious problems. <laughs> Maybe they just have much easier lives. You can't know for sure, since, well, all people are different. Or are they? Sometimes someone's actions can be easily predicted, but if you try to look inside his soul, you'll only see impenetrable darkness. The bus was approaching downtown, and my thoughts were interrupted by the bright city lights. Hundreds of billboards, thousands of cars, <laughs> millions of people. I watched this light show, and somehow I just got terribly sleepy. I closed my eyes for just a moment, and then... Yes, this game is very, very stylized, but in an interesting way, as I say, you know, I, I kind of like it. As I say, this feels like a sort of opening credits type sequence, which is fine. Another person. Multiple other people. I love the fact this game actually has a disclaimer on the front that just says, just for the record, all of these people are meant to be over 18. Admittedly, some of them you can't really tell. What is it with anime and everybody having ridiculous hair colours? Hmm. Why well, don't get the feeling that was probably also used as the trailer? Day one. And again, I have no idea how long this game's going to be, incidentally. Bright daylight struck my eyes, and at first I didn't pay attention as I wasn't fully awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Oh, damn. Looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. There was no door. I looked around the bus and realised that it wasn't a good old worn out Liaz. Instead, the bus was an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been... K 
kidnapped? No, no, I must be dead. I patted myself down feverishly, slapped at my painful, slapped myself painfully in the face a few times, and banged my forehead on the back of one of the bus seats. When well, it's clear, I'm either still alive, or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept too long, ended up at the bus depot, but, but then why would they put me onto another bus? I rushed out and took a look around. Greenery wherever I looked. Tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers. Summer? But how? It was winter just a moment ago. My head was aching unbearably, as if it was going to explode. And slowly, I began to remember. That's a little creepy. A long road running off into the distance. Forests, plains, fields, lakes, and forests again. I I think I was sleeping, but how can I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She, she softly whispered something in my ear. And then a gap again. And then, I woke up here. Who was that strange girl? Was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better, calm me down a little. I felt warmth all over coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then I need to find her, and the best place to look for her is away from here. I rushed to the left and then to the right and then stopped, hesitating over where to go. Finally, I ran in the direction for which the bus had probably come. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Thoughts become clearer and well, it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping breaths of hot air. In any case, the rug did its job. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe... Maybe I really am just dreaming. Though, recalling myself home on the bus, I immediately rejected the idea. No, I am neither dreaming nor dead. A narrow road ran through the field and far into the distance. The exact same road from my dream. I must be very far away from home. And it's not just that it was winter yesterday and it's summer now. It's the whole environment. Of course, summer is usually like this, green and hot, but... But everything here is not entirely lifelike. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century. The grass is too lush, the bushes are well, not like bushes should be. They're so thick you can't see anything through them, and the treetops honestly... and the trees themselves. I mean, the forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had closed ranks and were just waiting for the order to advance on the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which was now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear overtook me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. Oh, but what does it mean? In fact, it means nothing at all. Oh, couldn't they have had power lines even in hell? <laughs> Roasting sinners over hot coals? So last century. I must have reached the point of no return, after which you should either lose your mind completely, or finally try and understand what's going on. And while I still have a choice, I should definitely pick the second option. Oh, I slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was scary. <laughs> but I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or in the woods. And this wretched bucket of bolts is the only kind of link I have with the real world. I should carefully scout the area. A brick wall and the gates crowned with a Sovyanok sign. Statues of pioneers standing on either side, and a road sign nearby showing the bus route number 410. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. A person may start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. Something like that's probably going to happen to me now. The place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gates, no damage to the walls. Sovyanok. What could, a, what could have a name like that? 
Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Of course, the simplest explanation, logically speaking, explains nothing at all. The strange girl, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp. Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleep, from hallucination to a time-space shift. None was worse than the other, but well, there was no, really no way to pick a single one. And then it occurred to me, I can try and make a phone call. I took out my cell phone and dialed the first number from my contact list. But instead of signal strength bars, the screen was showing a thick cross. Alright, there may be no signal in such a remote place. Though I can't be the only one who came here. Buses don't drive themselves. I examined the bus from all sides to make sure that it wasn't a hallucination. A bit of dirt on the bottom, some rust here and there, faded paint, worn out tyres. <sighs> now this is a very ordinary Icarus. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carely f carelessly fall asleep. <laughs> I gave a nervous chuckle, and it came out by itself sporadically. But this wasn't the right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curb beside the bus and started to wait. My patience didn't last long, and my anxiety seemed to have reached its peak and I started to go slightly mad. In such a situation, anyone would probably have felt something similar. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only void and darkness. Is this how everything will end? How, how my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There's so many things I haven't had time for yet. I was overwhelmed by the idea. This was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. Oh God, why? Yes, this game is very trippy and existential. <laughs> Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. And I curled up and started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard by the speechless statues of the pioneers and a bird on a tree, which immediately flapped its wings and took off, crying out something in its own bird language, as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after-dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly sobbing occasionally. After a while, I pulled myself together. My mind cleared up a bit, as if terror and fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what was all this for? It doesn't look like an experiment, either. And if this is just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Still, for now, it feels like there's no danger. And the panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood still pounding in my temples and my hands was still shaking, but... Well, at least I could think clearly now. Well, right now there's nothing I can really change anyway. So no matter how much I think or how mad I get, it'll only make things worse. Until some actual facts appear, there's no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lying to the ground here. This camp, if, well, of course it really is a camp, looked like the only place where people could be, so I decided to go there. And hardly had I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them. Well, that to me seems like a pretty reasonable point to end this first part, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next part of this fairly trippy but kind of interesting little game.